Let's talk about Tommy some more. Let's talk about the game. Let's okay. We'll talk about the game. Let's uh, let's talk about the numbers. Okay. That's the biggest thing, right? We uh, mm. so DonBest.com and StatFox.com are the ones that give you just the raw data, right? And it's a little weird for this matchup because before, you know, Nick Foles has only been the quarterback for five games, but he's four and one. He's got eight touchdowns to two interceptions. The biggest difference that I have seen here, one, the Eagles' defense is absolutely outstanding. Yes. Just absolutely outstanding. But the turnover ratio, did you realize it was as big a difference as as it is? No. So the Eagles are plus 12 on turnover margin, and the Patriots are only plus 5. And I'm a little surprised by that. I thought the Patriots got way more turnovers, and instead, I mean, the defense isn't very good. Yeah, the defense just isn't very good. So one of the biggest things is uh, New England gives up almost five yards per rushing attempt. I was surprised by that. Now they haven't in the playoffs, but is there anything? Is there something the Eagles can do? No. So we need to stop looking at all. Remember how the beginning of the season, like the first six to eight weeks, the Patriots defense really looked like it was going to be possibly the worst defense we'd ever seen. (laughs) It was brutal early. You can't look at all. All those numbers are combined in these numbers. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm. You got it. You got it. That's what I said. That's the raw data. Yeah. You, but you, at some point, this raw data is lying to you if that team is completely different today than they were then. Yeah. Okay. It, it's just the truth. Um, the Eagles have a great defense. Nobody's denying that. That is the sole reason they are here. Oh, 100%. Okay? Without that great defense, they never get by Atlanta. Look, look at how close these numbers are. I just want to toss these out there. The points okay. for and points against, Philadelphia has won their games by an average of 28.3 to 17.3. The Patriots have won their games by an average of 28.7 to 18.3. It is almost it's identical. It's pretty close. It's unbelievable. They're both 15-3 and three, straight up. They are both 12-6 and six against the spread. And the over-unders, the Patriots are 8-10. and 10, So they've, they've had 10 unders. And the Eagles are 9-9. Nine and nine. It, they they look like mirror images, except one team has Tom Brady and the other doesn't. And that's it. That's it. Well, but they don't look like mirror images. When you look at numbers, they look like mirror images. Yeah, that's but, what I'm saying. But one saying. team has an elite-level defense, and the other team has a defensive genius, but not a lot of players. All right, so the line right now is, I believe, still at four and a half. Is that four, right? Four and a half everywhere I've looked. All right. Here are some of the betting trends for any of you that want to look at some action on this game. Philadelphia, the over is 10-3 and three in their last 13 games on field turf. They are 9-3 and three against the spread against a team with a winning record. However, the Eagles are 2-7 and seven against the spread in their last nine games on field turf. And I know that this sounds like it is ridiculous stuff for us to talk about. But there's a reason why these numbers are out there, right? Like, once it gets to be a trend like that, it becomes something real. New England, the over is 8-2 and two for New England in the last 10 playoff games. New England is 16-5 and five against a team with a winning record. And the under is 10-4 and four in New England's last 14 games overall. So New England tends to score more points in the playoffs. Overall, though, the under has been hitting a lot for them recently. I think Vegas has put a lot of stock in Brady, and he just doesn't have the weapons. So, like, the under has been, you know, whatever. It did, Like, it hit last week. And I believe it, it didn't it hit uh, the under hit for um, the Titans game? The Titans game. I don't remember. It was 35 to 14. I think the total was over 50. So, yeah, the under hit in that one, too. I don't remember that. I don't remember that far back. They might have been overvaluing Tom Brady and his weapons. No, they scored thirty-five. They were overvaluing the Titans. What the being Titans able could to score. do? Yeah, you might be right. You might be right. All right, Nick Foles is uh, is the talk of the town right now. He has thrown for eleven hundred and thirty-five yards. His completion percentage is sixty-four point six three, six point nine yards per attempt. 
Eight touchdowns, two interceptions, and a quarterback rating of 96. Is that going to be enough to be able to get them a win? I don't know. We'll have to see. Let me know when you're ready to start making picks. <laughs> you're throwing a lot of numbers out there. Right, but but at some before, point in time, we're going to flip a coin. They're going to kick a ball off, and these guys have to play. All right. Now, before we get into that, look, USA Today Sports had a great article in their For the Win uh, piece online or whatever. Uh, the article was, Bill Belichick may need Nick Saban's help to beat the Eagles. Steven Ruiz is the writer. He points out that the Eagles have run 25 RPOs, that's run pass option, for an average of 5.6 yards per play. Runners are averaging 4.5 yards per carry on these plays compared to 3.6 yards on traditional run plays. And Foles has completed all 10 of his RPO passes for an average gain of 7.7 yards. Now, here, here's an excerpt from it. I'm going to read this, this thing out, and we'll see what you think about it, all right? Okay. With the Patriots facing a unique challenge for their staff and a more common one for college coaches, it would be a shock if Belichick didn't call his old friend Tuscaloosa for some pointers on defending the Eagles' offense. But even Saban can be at a loss when it comes to slowing down the RPO. I don't think there's any answer to RPOs, Saban said last offseason. You can run a running play, and the offensive line blocks a running play, which the defensive player keys a run and pass, but it's a running play. And the quarterback sits there and does his thing and then throws the ball because the safety doesn't come down or the safety does come down or whatever. There's no solution to that. It's very difficult to play defensive football when you can't key the difference between runs and passes. Saban, like Belichick in any press conference, isn't being entirely forthcoming there. He has discovered some solutions to the RPO problem. James Light, a high school football coach in Michigan who has become somewhat of a Twitter repository for all things Saban, says Alabama will identify the defender the offense is reading and use him in different ways to confuse the quarterback. So he posted a tweet that said, I've written about it a few times, but Alabama has some really smart ways where they can screw with the quarterback by taking the run, what, uh, run fit off of the player the, deep, or the offense is trying to read or conflict on the RPO turns it into a dummy read, and then makes the offense wrong even when they read it right. So Saban will have the read defender drop out to defend the pass, right, while rotating the safety into the box, and he takes his place uh, in the run fit. So the defense has as many numbers in the box as it did before the snap while still being able to defend the pass option. It, it's a simple yet effective solution. Another option that they have is to just blitz the read defender. So as soon as the ball is snapped, immediately – you attack. So the issue with that, though, it works great if you have fantastic cornerbacks. If you don't have cornerbacks that you are comfortable with, which Belichick will never do this. He will not put his guys on an island because I don't think he trusts them. You tell me this because you know it better than I do. Does, does Belichick trust his secondary to put them out on islands like that? Because you know the Eagles are going to absolutely test them deep. I don't. I don't know the answer to that. I. Th I think he trusts Gilmore, and I think he trusts Butler. Um. To cover guys one on one, man to man. When you're getting into three and four receiver packages, everything changes. Because you can't just say, "Well, we covered two of them, so we can run our defense a certain way." You've got to change the way you run defense. The biggest problem the Patriots have with trying to do any of this stuff is they have no pass rush. They haven't all year. They can yeah. they can rush four. They can rush five. They can rush six. They cannot get to the quarterback consistently. Which is why you don't bring yeah. So so the it doesn't defenders. it doesn't do you any good to play the rush. I. I would say that I would think you rush the four standard and you play everybody else back in coverage and you you know you have your linemen just play the run your linebackers read you know they're covering a the guy but they're also watching to see do they hand the ball off kind of thing they're athletic enough to are make, they, are make they some fast decisions. enough to be able to to swap that quick I mean they're not great but they'll give up yards but they won't give up huge plays the goal is to give up yards and not and not big plays um, in, in this kind of defense. The the only thing that I don't understand about our defense was last two weeks ago when they played the Jaguars 
seventy percent of the completions that that Blake Broyles had, the guys were wide open, and and I'm not exaggerating. Nobody well, and that was, was that was all part of the RPO in yeah, the first nobody, half. Nobody was with it. No, but. But it then, was but, it was but, with the defense. They were running a zone defense, and and we rarely do that. And I don't really understand why they went to a zone. And I can't understand it. But in the second well, they half, out of it. In the second half, they got out of it, and they shut them completely down. So I I wonder if it's there's no telling what they're going to do the first half because the whole first half of the game they're just trying to fill things out, and whether it works out for them or not, I think they're just filling things out. In the second half of the game, the way they come out is going to be substantially different. Yeah. And they will learn through that time what they need to do to stop this team. Yeah. I'm so I don't I don't know really what what Bill's looking for. I'm not I know our defense isn't great. If you ask me what the best part of our defense is, I would take Gilmore and Butler and say those two guys gotta be better than anybody else because I mean I love Flowers. Flowers is stud. But like he, he's not. He's the only guy on the line that can consistently get pressure, you know. With with High Tower being out for the season and missing everything, we have no linebackers that we trust that have been in big game situations that have done any of this stuff. Yeah. Defensively, we are completely inept. We don't have the dudes to do it. We're not a complete team. But you, you think that? How about all right? Let's go on and get to our picks. Because we're we're running out of time, uh, oh, I the, hate the hour's the almost clock. up. I hope that, I hate that you put me on the clock for that. You go ahead and give your pick quickly, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna go then. I'm going Patriots minus five. I got well minus four, four and a half because that's our number right now. But I got the Patriots early, and when I saw that it was only five, it had come down from six. I said, "All right." What do you think the game's gonna be like? I think this will end up being about a thirty-one to thirty-one twenty-four ball game. Okay. That's my guess. I am. I think it will go the pay, or the uh, the Eagles' way early, and then it's the same thing that we see all the time. I have I have been afraid every year when the Patriots get in the playoffs. Every game, there's never been a single game that that we have played in <laughs> that I feel any confidence whatsoever. I always believe them to win, but I'm always terrified, and that's the way every game has gone. Yeah, every, all all five of the victories have been this way. I think we are going to see an old school '90s Super Bowl where one team just kicks the shit out of the other team. I think they break the trend of not scoring in the first quarter. I think they score twice. I think they get up early. I think they continue to pile on. I think Tom Brady is going to do things that nobody has ever seen at the age of 40 to put himself on a mantle that nobody can take down. I think Belichick is going to figure this defense out and he is going to slow them down. He won't stop them. They will score, but they will not crack 20. That is my that is my my goal in this is for them to keep it down. Offensively, how do we stop Eagles defense? A man that nobody will talk about. Nobody will mention this individual's name whatsoever. But the MVP of this game is going to be the man that can keep Tom Brady standing straight up and down. His name is Dante Scarnecchia. He is the offensive lineman, our offensive line coach that Bill begged to come back a couple of years ago after he retired. And he has done an unbelievable job. Saxonville got one sack on Tom. Yeah. Tennessee, good defense, one sack on Tom. Nobody can sack him, and they're going to get some pretty good sack defenses. The Eagles, you got one sack on the Vikings last week. You better be lucky if you get one this week. We're both going Pats. Big. I love it. That's going to wrap it up. We'll catch you guys on Wednesday or on uh, Monday. Monday. Yeah. On Monday, yeah. We're not going to be here after the Super Bowl. So, until next time, go subscribe on iTunes and all that good stuff. Share out the podcast or the Facebook Live or the Periscope, whatever. We appreciate all you guys for joining us. We'll see you next go round.